We got James Harden in that beard of his. Look, this guy's relentless. We know he's gonna attack the basket all night long. So I'm gonna make it my personal mission to keep that from happening. As long as we keep jumping those passing lanes, we can give them a run for their money. I know I'll be ready. to BMO Harris Bradley Center. We are in Milwaukee, the home of the Milwaukee Bucks, and we're bringing it to you live here on 2K Sports. For the Bucks, they continue their stretch of home games. This is an important game for them because they've really been struggling. Just one win in their last five games. And I think for Milwaukee, hanging where they are, Rockets trail. Jones with the screen on Carter Williams. Jones, no one around him. And a little luck that time, but it drops. Jones has got his first basket. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge, Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. And the Rockets making a change here. Beverly's checked in. And for Terrence Jones, there's a quiet excitement surrounding him in personnel circles. Last season, he, he was a much better rim protector, way up in blocks, and his three-point percentage was up as well. So those are the kinds of year three improvements that talent evaluators are always looking for, especially when you come into the league as an underclassman. A reason or what? Milwaukee's gone 0-3 from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. Here's Mayo. Got it from 16 feet. Now it's a three-point Bucks lead. Obviously a mix-up defensively on that possession. And here's Beverly. He's averaging around five and a half points a game. Rebound by Parker. Milwaukee leading by three. Carter Williams with it. A 17-point game for him in the win against Detroit. But what stood out for me was his gorgeous playmaking out there. I mean, over and over, he was finding his teammates in a great position to score. The Bucs shooting their fourth and fifth attempts at the free throw line tonight. Taking two shots. And he knocks down the first one. Vasquez, he's checked in for Michael Carter-Williams. Houston also making some changes. Howard's checked in for Jones. And it's Thornton in for James Harden. That one misses. Rockets trail by four. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. And Brewer kicks to Howard. For the three. Thornton no good. Boy, they're fortunate. The defense was taking a big chance leaving him that wide open behind the arc. Vasquez with it. He's picked up by Ariza. Vasquez dishes to Monroe. Mayo left side. Six on the shot clock. Here's Vasquez. That's short off the rim. Tell you what, they haven't wasted any time getting into the swing of things on the boards. And even this early, that's a good omen for the rest of the game. And the basket by Thornton. A good open look, and he splashes home the three. The Bucks shooting 33% here in the first quarter. Now we'll go to Doris Burke, who had a chance to talk with head coach Kevin McHale. We discussed their game plan defensively, and he mentioned that controlling Greg Monroe will be crucial. He said Monroe is a guy who can score inside, rebounds well, and his passing really sets him apart. Their offense runs best when it goes through his hands, 
so pressuring him and staying vigilant is essential for us. Guys, can they slow him down? Thanks a lot, Doris. Good. No hesitation at all right there. Just right up against a much bigger defender. Man, and I love that fearlessness, that aggressive attitude. Boy, I love watching guys play with that kind of abandon and freedom, Greg. It's a beautiful thing, man. Vasquez kicks to Monroe. And the shot's good after hitting off the rim. Monroe's got nine points. Rockets trail by three. Howard setting the pick for Beverly. Down low. And it's slammed in by Howard. Boy, that was a violent throw down there. You're telling me. I mean, it's almost like he doesn't like the rim. Now here's Vasquez. His last outing, he had eight points. Parker passes to Jordan. And the Rockets have lost out on some free agent wars the past few years. They have remained competitive, but you wonder what could have been if they landed or kept some of those big names. For Milwaukee, they have gone four for five from the charity stripe in this one up to now. Only shooting 71, really, on the season, so there is plenty of room for improvement. And, Kevin, it's something they've been working very hard to correct and to change. I mean, they know how important it is to fix that inability at the free throw line. And the first one at the line is good. So he picks up just one from the line that time. Houston's gone three of seven from three point range in the first quarter. Howard setting the pick for Beverly. Here's Ariza. It's good. This game is all even. Ariza's got five. And with the Rockets, it's no secret that they take a very analytical approach to team building. Uh, Greg, you and I have talked about that. And Clark, you know, you wonder if that hurts them in free agency. Well, you know, when your front office makes no qualms about viewing players as simply just assets, it can be a hard sell to a free agent. Well, for Jabari Parker in his rookie year, not the kind of NBA career start that he wanted. Played great. Uh, was probably the rookie of the year mm. up until the time he was injured, blowing the knee and cutting his season short. Yeah, a great call. He definitely would have had a great chance. Really just made a transition seamlessly, very efficient as a rookie before that injury, but which was a really tough thing to watch for anyone he, he, as he was showing so much promise early on in his career. And Parker drops them both. And for Parker, he could have been in the rookie of the year running with this play, scoring just over 12 points a game and shooting almost 50 percent before the injury ended his season. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Hi, Kevin. Jason Kidd was just going over the plan with his team. He told the team he wanted to run their offense through Parker. Coach is looking for something special from him. He's usually not their main option at the offensive end, but it looks like he's going to be today. It's still very early in this game, so there's plenty of time for those changes to take effect, Kevin. Thank you, Doris. And even in the short glimpses of last season, you could see that Parker was the real deal. I mean, he had no problem finding ways to score. And even with his injury setback, he should be a great player for years to come. And trailing here in the early going, too many careless fouls, and they're giving up a lot of trips to the line. Yeah, not only the trips to the line are a concern, but the foul trouble also. You've got to play defense with your feet and do so without foul. That one misses. Rockets trail by three. The pass to Brewer, to the inside. That's good from Ariza on the assist from Corey Brewer. Seven points for Trevor Ariza. Some defensive breakdowns are starting to show up now. Their last four buckets allowed have come from very close range. The yeah, high percentage shots are what they are getting in terms of the attempts, and that's just not going to get it done. They've got to figure it out. Parker kicks to Jordan. 
40 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Parker with it. He's picked up by Ariza. No one near Mayo as he lets it go. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Mayo's got five points so far. Now here's Beverly, guarded by Vasquez. Parker with the steal. Vasquez dishes to Jordan. Can't get it to fall. And that concludes the first quarter of play. The Bucks on top, up by four. And now let's hear from Ty Lawson talking about the balanced attack of this Denver. We do have a team type of game. You know, everybody is scoring. Well, that was the game plan a couple years ago when Denver was good enough to make the so big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Greg Monroe, he's checked in for Jabari Parker. Jordan comes in for Giannis Antetokounmpo. O.J. Mayo is checked in.